Improve your health, maximize your immune system, grow muscle and lose fat faster. Rova Immune is not herbs and spices. It's not a proprietary blend. It's patented. It's a one-of-a-kind product. It's backed by science from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Rova is a protein antibody. It's different. It's real science and gets real results. Check us out at Prova.com. Dave Palumbo back with another edition of RX Supplement and Science. And I am here today with my longtime friend and, and admitted skeptic of the world in general, Brian Cunningham. We used to also have a show on RX Muscle called Quantum Physiques. Welcome back. Hey, Dave. Thanks. Good to be on again, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> you, you always disappear for like a number of years, and then all of a sudden you'll, you'll hit me up again and we'll, we'll reconnect and uh, do some great stuff, do an interview. and. Get you back. What's going on in your life? What have you been up to? I mean, just the same old. I got, you know, running a farm and I got the uh, CBD store I just mentioned to you in the mall, which closed down, unfortunately. Which what is kind of farm do you got going now? I mean, you know, it's a small gig with uh, a bunch of rescued horses and chickens. I mean, it's just a hobby thing. Oh, I, okay. I don't do it to make money because farming is really brutal. And as you know, unless you're Monsanto, no one else is making money in farming these days. <laughs> Are you, do you actually go out there and, uh, and clean up the, the, the horse poop and stuff like that? I just, yeah, I clean the horse poop. Yeah, exactly. I, I put antibiotics in their mouths and stuff, which I'm not a horse guy, but I'll tell you, actually, I love those horses. They're like pet dogs. They're yeah. really affectionate and gentle. And they're, they're huge, yeah. but like there's something about them that's very calming to be in their presence, actually. So it's kind of cool, really? you know? I was thinking yeah. about getting horses because, you know, I have a lot of property out here and, and the weather's beautiful down here in Florida, but uh, my neighbor has them across the street. And I, I think it's, I, I'd rather enjoy his horses because I don't have any of the responsibility of the horses, you know? Yeah, it's like a boat, the boat thing, right? The best day in a boat owner's life is the first day yeah. he buys it, the day he sells it. <laughs> I, I want to get some cow. I want to get a couple of those mini cows, though. I think they're pretty cool. I'd rather have <laughs> cows. They, they kind of don't really need that much uh, attention like horses do. You know? And you can milk them and get some fresh milk, man, with the lack of all that stuff going on, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I might even do goat. Goat milk is supposed to be good because it has very low lactose. You know, Maybe I'll do goats. Yeah, goats and sheep are better actually because they're easier on our gut, which is a big issue these days. Everyone's got gut dysbiosis, yeah. so without a doubt, go for the go for the. And they goats eat weeds and all kinds of crazy things too. Oh, they eat every. That's what I want to do to keep uh, they're like lawn mowers, basically. You know, little lawn yeah. mowers. <laughs> I saw one on Shark Tank. There was a company on Shark Tank doing the goats. They would lease the goats to people, go in and clean up the yard and charge them for it. <laughs> that, I I wanted my neighbors all have goats. I'm like thinking of like, hey, can you get these goats over here and just clean my yard up? It cost me like you know a couple hundred bucks to have this thing cleared. It's probably yeah. way cheaper to and let the goats go. And you get free fertilizer. And there the you process. go. That's right. That's there you go. There you go. <laughs> now you opened the CBD store in the mall up by you in Westchester, there, right? Or upstate? I guess you're upstate now. I did. Yeah, I got a really good hookup with some farms in Colorado that supply Charlotte's Web, so it's really high quality CBD. Um, and I'm using the other cannabinoids as well. You know, I'm big on the next thing, so I'm doing the whole multi cannabinoid terpene blends is where I'm going. Right. And um, you know, it was going decent. I, I can't say I was killing it, but I did no advertising. It was all word of mouth, and it was yeah. only maybe like 10 or 11 months, so it took time. But then this thing came in just as I'm about to start doing advertising, and it kind of quashed the whole right. thing. So now we got this. You know, massive. Um, what's the word? Suppression of the economy. I mean, it's really yeah. bad what's going on, and if we're going to rebound, who knows? Can can retail stores actually do business anymore? I mean, I know more people in in, in New York like to go to malls than in other places, but everyone shops online now. I mean, is isn't it real very hard to make a living at a retail store because you got to pay rent and employees and all that kind of stuff? I was just in one of the local vitamin stores yesterday, and they were saying that the number of mom and pops independents mm. has gone down from like 3,000, like maybe five or six years ago, to like maybe half that, like 1,500. Sure, people are opening up stores and gyms, right? But definitely, you know, independents are facing a lot of pressure from Amazon, without a doubt. You know? Yeah, yeah. So it hasn't been easy, but I, you know, then again, 
some of them are killing it, and apparently they're able to cater to the customer experience of being around knowledgeable staff sure. that can give them better uh, insight than Amazon can. You can only get so much from reading Amazon reviews, you know what I mean? Right. What's your, uh, what's your experience with uh, CBD? What do you, which ones do you like? What, what do you think it's used for best? Can bodybuilders use these things? I mean, of course, you know, the endocannabinoid system, as you know, is a master regulatory system, so it does govern a lot of homeostatic mechanisms. Um, and so at that, it's always good to try it out and see what kind of benefit you get. I don't feel much myself, but I got a really good diet. And I think that, uh, yeah. you know, a good diet helps your body make endogenous cannabinoids anyway. So, um, you know, it's, there's good evidence behind it, but I think some people are overdoing it. You don't want to be hammering. I'm a big fan of not hammering any one system. Like you don't want to hammer serotonin or GABA or the androgen receptor too much because you get down regulation. You don't want to be hammering the endocannabinoid system too hard either. And some people are taking like, you know, two, 300 milligrams a day of CBD. Right. Uh, you know, it's just, I'm not sure what the long-term effects are yet. I'm, I'm not really sure. I, to me, it's more like the whole like uh, less is more um, philosophy makes more sense. Sure. Use them when you, you know. need them, not every single day on a regular basis. You know. Yeah. If you're getting some omega-3s in your diet, uh, you know, believe it or not, even music, music upregulates up endogenous cannabinoid functions. So <laughs> we get our body doing this stuff naturally anyway. And right. if you got a good diet, you know, with some good omega-3 fish oil or, or fatty acids or whatever, you should be okay. And I think then you're right, maybe just sporadically at best. Well, why do you think that, that, I mean, aside from the fact that people like to just be numb all the time, why do people, what do you think, uh, when it comes to this, uh, you know, the people who smoke marijuana on like a, 10 times a day, you know, what, what, what's the benefit of doing that, do you think? Well, THC is a different molecule, of course. And yeah. uh, I think that the direction of research is showing the other cannabinoids are healthier long term. Like CBD doesn't act directly on the endocannabinoid system. And it's actually an endocannabinoid reuptake inhibitor. So it ends up making your body's endogenous cannabinoids like two arachidonyl um, glycerol and anandamide, it makes them function better mm. uh, in a sense, whereas TEC kind of hammers oh. your cannabinoid system. Right. And it's been associated now with um, you know poor sleep quality. Uh, forget about the psychosis issue, that's not that much of an issue. But also the gut has a high amount of cannabinoid receptors and there is some concern now that hammering that system too much can cause some type of irregularities in gut tissue such that I think it's uh, Chong, Tommy Chong actually had a, had a GI can stomach cancer yeah. and he's been a long term proponent of, um, you know, of cannabis. So I'm not really that big of a fan of THC. It is more psychoactive, of course. And like you said, right. people want to be comfortably numb, but there's healthier ways of, you know, kind of like reducing stress and anxiety besides just, again, hammering one thing all the time. Like sure. for me, Creighton, I love Kratom. It's a great way to kind of chill out and feel good. Mm -hmm. And I think the media, again, has really exaggerated the dark side of it totally. Right. Um, that, you know, as long as you don't abuse it, you know, and again, I think it's good because it down regulates itself anyway to some extent. If you keep using it, you mm -hmm. get less of an effect, right. which is your body's way of saying, hey, wake up and, you know, get off this stuff as an example, you know. Mm -hmm. So Kratom's really good for me. Um, you know, I think things, honestly, I mean, it's going to sound crazy, but even spending time in nature, studies show that you upregulate serotonin function. Yeah. You can elevate GABA sensitivity. You can re-up, you know, increase GABA-1 or GABA-A receptors. And, um, you know, that's a really great thing to help people reconnect and feel good. And it's simple. You know what I mean? Well, you know, it's even simpler, finding something you enjoy doing. And yeah. you'll, you'll be shocked at how many endocannabinoids you release, you know? Yeah, exactly. I enjoy everything I do during the day, so I'm always in a good mood. People always say, how come you're always smiling? I'm like, I'm in a good mood. I do what I like. You know, you're very so rarely do I have to do stuff that I don't like. You know, I get to yeah, do... You're so, happy. you're so happy it pisses me off, man. You're like, Mr. Happy, man. So <laughs> well, you know, it is. things happen to me, but I, I, yeah. I roll with the punches. But the, the, the thing is that I, on a regular basis, I try to do things that I enjoy doing, which is st interviews like this. Um, I have my little snake and reptile collection that I that I enjoy doing late at night when everyone's sleeping, and I don't mind answering 600 emails a day because I know I'm helping people, and so I get a high from doing all that. And so when you're always getting a high all day long from from everything you're doing because you, I, I spend time with my kids and my wife, I, I enjoy that. So I'm never doing anything on a regular basis that I don't enjoy, you know. And I think that's a lot of people are depressed because they don't really they're, they're depressed really with their life situation more so than than anything else. So they're trying to find a way to 
to suppress that or, or, or make that better. But the truth is the only way to really change that would be to change what you're doing, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, you make a great point because I've known you for like over 30 years now, man. You've always been the same way, actually, really kind of happy-go-lucky all yeah. the time. But it's like you made a really great point about being inspired because when you're inspired, you're naturally willing to suffer through. I mean, having sure. kids is not easy. No. So, you know, when you're inspired. You're really – it's a higher calling in a sense, and yeah. you're willing to be happy in spite of the pain you have to deal with in life. Motivation, which a lot of guys have and, you know, it drives a lot of us in society, is really more fear-based – and sure. um, that really does not provide a long-term sense of satisfaction that you're kind of, uh, you know, pointing to. And I think that's yeah. a great point. You know, it's kind of funny, especially in this year with this pandemic, 2020, you know, there's some kind of like, you know, philosophical implication there. About people got to start looking and getting their vision clearly about right. what is it we as a society want to focus on, actually, you know. And I think you kind of hit the nail on the head philosophically that it might be something to really start considering because most of us, we don't want to think too deeply either because that's painful also. Sure. You know, well, I got my shirt on. You, I'm going to send you one. Desire summons life force, you know. Oh, yeah. You got to have a desire to, and be desirable about what you want to do and you will summon that which, which, you, which, which, which you desire. But you have to desire. A lot of people have nothing. To, they don't desire anything. They, 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 don't, they don't know what to do with themselves. And so you got to well, find things that you enjoy doing. That's, that's the key. But the dark side is that people um, are only stuck in the modality of desire, which leads to consumerism. Then you get this cancerous society we have where it's just like, you need a new Land Rover. You need this. You need bigger muscles. You're not big enough yet. You know, you need to get breast implants. Your right. boobs aren't big enough. No one's yeah. going to love you. Yeah, but that, that's people. because they're, that's a fear-based desire. That's really not a desire. That's an, that's, I want to I wanna, you know, prove to everyone else that I have the, the biggest muscles or I want to prove to... People really don't, at, at, at the core of who they are, soul-wise, need that. That's no, just a cover-up. You know that. Yeah. I mean, but I didn't need to be... Economy, though. See, I didn't need to be 300 economy. pounds, a bodybuilder, you know, to, to prove it. You know, but I, it, in, my, in my warped mind at the time, I felt that that was going to make me more important, I think. And luckily for me, I used it in a productive way, and I found a niche for myself. But... But I could have also taken it to the extreme and wound up dead like a lot of these guys have because I just couldn't yeah. stop, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know? No, but you're right. I mean, the fear, the desire, which runs, and I think you hit a good point, is that, you know, when it gets to be too one-dimensional, like society being fed these memes of you're inadequate, you need to have a nice watch or a nice car or, yeah. or you know, or glute implants now or cheek <laughs> implants or whatever. No, I mean, these are all symptoms. Yeah. Of, of a society gone sick in a way, really, in a sense, when you deify science yeah. and materialism, you get these extremes here where everything is material in a sense, you know, and inspiration, which you talk about. And, you know, you and I aren't really spiritual people, but there is something more, what's the word, um, ethereal in the world than the physical, without a doubt. And right. inspiration, in spiritus, means to breathe in, but it means in spiritus, in spirit. There's something there, I think, on a philosophical level that people need to start thinking about in their lives to start maybe shifting their focus and what they value, you know? And that, that's one thing you've always had is that value of being inspired, yeah. you know? So how do, how do you help or how do you recommend to people to, to get out of this fear-based, I guess, thinking that they're in, especially in what's going on now with coronavirus? I mean, the media, if you watch the news, you'll, you'll be horrified. I mean, people walk around there, you know, they're so worried. If I watch these people in the supermarket, they're like, I mean, old ladies are fighting with, you know, people over a roll of toilet paper. I mean, give me a break. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, what do you recommend? You always have a very uh, grounded answer when I ask you these, these philosophical questions. Well, I mean, yeah, because, you know, my show was based on the mind-body aspect. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, the mind-spirit really more. You were more focused on the body aspect and competition and all that. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, for me, it's really about introspection, about philosophy, about having not just taking these standard, um, you know, spoon-fed um, memes from society, but going deeper and, and having your own personal connection with inspiration, you know, and that can be through a church. I'm not making anything wrong, whether no matter what religion you are yeah. or what gender or what political orientation you are, finding what works for you and focusing on that. You know, I mean, for some people it's music or, you know, for me it's um, sacred plant medicine, being in nature, meditation, uh, you know, exploring the cosmos of the mind in a sense and understanding that, you know, in a sense, we really are creating our reality because our beliefs and our values you know, coat the lens of perception upon which we then, uh, you know, notice data, right? There's so much data in the world. I mean, I think on average, 
you're actually exposed to like 100,000 kilobytes of data per second, <laughs> but you notice about 3,000. So the filters that allow you to focus on things are what you value and what you believe in, you know? And yeah. so if your life isn't working for you, you're not happy, perhaps like just thinking about that and working on something that makes you feel more connected is a way, because really, you know, as you think, so you are. I mean, this is all these great quotes of all these wise men right. that have walked for us and stuff, you know? So without a doubt, um, and you're seeing that also, of course, I mean, you'd have, you know, half of Joe Rogan's guests are people that are into, you know, mind, spirit, sacred yeah. plant medicine. Aubrey Marcus has dev devoted his whole life to this, actually. He actually left on it and became this spokesperson for, you know, awakening in a sense, right? And we're seeing that a lot. And it's kind of funny, the whole awakening movement mm -hmm. that 2020 is about, like, having clear vision. Mm -hmm. And so maybe there's something really important here that as a, as a world we need to look at. I think maybe this pandemic is forcing us to look at these issues on a deeper level, you know? Right. All right, well, that, now that, let's get to the meat and potatoes of this whole thing because you, by nature you're a skeptic, you know, and you and you believe in the conspiracies, you know, and, and and a lot of the conspiracies that you believe in, I believe in as well. <laughs> what yeah. what do you think is going on with this coronavirus? What's your what's your theory on it? Because all we can do is give our theories. No one knows for sure. Um, yeah, what do you think is, is happening here oh, with this? Thing? I just want to do a quick caveat about conspiracies because so many people tend to dismiss conspiracy theories and lump them together like you know like Loch Ness Monster is at the same level of as like say uh, the Gulf of Tomkin that launched the Vietnam War right. or who shot JFK you can't each one deserves to be looked at on its own Absolutely. and for people to dismiss it is because they haven't looked at the evidence yet you know right so you have these people like you know the sheeple as I call them now you also have the crazies like the woo woo that believe everything is a conspiracy it's all a matrix of illusion <laughs> that's too also you know you got to kind of go in the middle somewhere but I definitely think if you combine things like, you know, Chomsky's manufacturing consent, which shows you how big corporations control media and the government, and you combine, like, say, Howard Bloom's The Lucifer Principle, which shows you, you know, like that, you know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. I mean, Nietzsche right there said it, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, you could say he was a dark guy, but, you know, nonfiction writers or people like him that think and they see reality, it tends to be kind of depressing, actually, because reality is kind of, you know, there's a lot of evil things going on in the world. So this particular issue here, I think, Dave, is important because who do we blame? People are already starting these memes against Asians and against their you know, cultural practices. And I think that it's kind of unfair when a lot of evidence might point to the fact that science, out of control science, not having stricter safety measures in these laboratories, as an example, right, either in America or in China, can allow things like this to leak out. And there's really good evidence. There was a study done in India that was pulled probably because they came to the wrong conclusion that they identified, you know, man-made in a sense, uh, HIV, uh, nucleic acids in this COVID-19. Yeah. So, you know, there's other evidence, nature published warnings, opinion pieces that this coronavirus research five years ago is getting out of hand. It's getting too dangerous. Um, there were joint teams of Americans and Chinese in Wuhan working on these things. There's actually a grad student uh, did a report, it hasn't been published yet, you know, it hasn't been peer reviewed, but he was saying that, you know, there's been reports in the lab he worked at of workers getting bit, of them, you know, getting um, bat blood and black bat urine on them, as an example. Yeah. So the whole like Wuhan uh, fish market uh, theory, you know, I'm not really sure if there's enough evidence to point to that directly because from what I understand, it was a fish market. It wasn't a market where they sell other body or other animals in a sense, you know, so there is, I'm not saying that it necessarily is a conspiracy, but I can think about it. If it did happen and you have a lot of money, you'd want to cover it up. You want to keep going with business as usual. So money interests do control a lot. And I think that right. it does point. Did you see the movie last year, Dark Waters about DuPont and Teflon? No, no. Oh, I mean, everybody should watch Dark Waters for a good primer on how corporations are and what they'll do as far as killing, literally killing I mean, look at Merck and Vioxx. They 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 knowingly killed 68,000 Americans. So DuPont also knowingly poisoned their workers and the American public with Teflon. And Dark Waters just came out last year, really giving a good expose on how these companies work and how they're willing to sacrifice, you know, uh, health and health and happiness of individuals to make more money and stuff. You know, mm -hmm. so this is very well known in the zeitgeist of culture. And I think that we as, as a society need to start holding uh, corporations more so than even political leaders more accountable for these things, mm. you know? Yeah, no, definitely. By the way, uh, Lord Acton said absolute power corrupts absolutely, but. 
Oh, thank you for that correction. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure Nietzsche says something dark about power and corruption yeah. in governments. <laughs> let, let me ask you this, though. You know, a lot of people are, you know, I was interviewing John Romano yesterday. We were talking, and he believes that the Chinese government um, wants to get rid of, they have too many people there, and that the old people are not contributing at all, except they're, they require medical care, and they, they compensate, you know, pay, payment checks to keep them, you know, living. And he believes that this virus was released to kind of cull the population, so to speak, because it targets, obviously, old, mostly old people die from it. It's not a, uh, by and far, most young people are not, unless they're immunocompromised or they're smokers or something like that, they're not really dying from this. What do you, believe, what do you think about that spirit, conspiracy theory? Again, you know, uh, somebody I know who is a federal court qualified expert witness on conspiracy theory, he's testified in many cases, he would say, look at the evidence. You know, so far, all, the only evidence I've seen that warrants further investigation is the um, the fact that they're working on COVID chi chimeras. They're actually doing modifying the coronavirus right. to create uh, man-made versions of it. The fact that security and, you know, protocols can be, um, you know, uh, what's the word, lax and can allow mistakes to happen. There seems to be evidence on those two things, you know, to warrant further investigation. But I haven't found any evidence to support that claim. So... I can't really speak um, with any veracity on that one. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Well, what do you think? What do you think that we should do as a as a population? Do you think this is going to go on for? I mean, first they said two weeks. Now people are <laughs> saying a month. I I think this is going to go on for a lot longer than that. I I, I think we'll be lucky oh, to get out of this by the end of the year. What, what do you think? I mean, the curve's not. You're not gonna. You're gonna flatten the curve, but the curve's still gonna be there. The area under the curve is still gonna be there, and everybody's acknowledging that this virus will spread throughout the general population without a doubt. But a lot of respected and credentialed uh, experts like medical doctors and uh, statisticians and epidemiologists are saying that the current reaction, the media storm, is really overdoing it. The um, Professor Iowandis from Stafford University was saying, if you look at the Princess Cruise Line, that was the worst case scenario. Right. It was a Petri dish with central air conditioning. They were locked down, they were locked in that place, an elderly population, 3,500 people on that ship, 712 got the virus and only seven or eight died. So he goes, that's a pretty good example. Iceland is doing the best data collection so far. And what they're showing is something very similar. Most people like 50% uh, are asymptomatic that are carrying it. The other 48%, 49% are pretty much mild symptoms. So again, the numbers are trending down towards being a typical flu as far as like who's getting sick. And it's typically, you know, people are telling me that I'm crazy because if you look at the TV, people are dying. But they never covered people dying on TV from Vioxx or right. from the flu. If you saw somebody on TV dying from the flu who was 35 years old, we'd be freaking out. Right. But we know there's 30 or 40,000 people a year dying in this country alone from the flu. It gets no media attention. So, you know, again, I think that what South Korea did, and this is, you know, I'm not a Trump fan, but I think he's trying to go in the direction of let's have a limited lockdown, test more people, find those at high risk, yeah. quarantine them, but allow the economy to go on. And that seems to be what South Korea did, and it's working really well. So I got a funny feeling that might be the direction, you know, him and his, um, you know, advisors are trying to go in. Yeah, I, I think that would, I think you're right. You gotta, you know, I believe that if we quarantine the people who are at most risk to die, that yeah. seems like the, the, the right way to address it. Now, unfortunately, those people have other people who are not at risk who might be going to work and, and bringing it back and infecting them anyway. So I don't know, you know, I don't know what to do with them, to be honest with spring you. Breakers, like Spring Breakers, for example. Yeah, yeah I think, it, um, I forgot where it was, but I think maybe it was either uh, Taiwan or um, South Korea, where they're doing a lot of testing. Millennials had a high rate of, inf of asymptomatic infections, actually, mm -hmm. you know. Interesting. So, yeah. yeah, you're right. You can't stop this thing. It seems to be more virulent as far as its ability to survive in the environment than, yeah. say, a typical, uh, you know, flu. I mean, the, but a lot of flu viruses are actually rhinoviruses and COVID viruses as well. So, yeah. you know, the flu is a, is a, a class, a family of viruses that Absolutely. include both rhinovirus and influenza and uh, COVID. But this one here in particular is more is more virulent. You're right, you know. Yeah. Well, it just it just happens to be able to really be spread very quickly too. And I think that's because it's a we made the virus essentially. <laughs> we made it better. We made a better virus, and then and, and it yeah, infects it does better. in that direction without a doubt. So, and it does preferentially attack males also, older males as you know in yeah, particular. Interesting, interesting. Now, here's my question to you. What could we do as bodybuilders, as people, to supplement, 
uh, to fortify our bodies against this virus, what would you suggest if you had to give your own? I, I've given my own supplement stacks between zinc and quinine to help stop the replication of it. You know, a good quality multivitamin, multimineral, you know, vitamin C. I like injectable glutathione in terms of, you know, enhancing the immune system. What, give me some of your, because you always have some esoteric stuff that like that maybe people yeah. haven't thought about. Well, I mean, listen, your audience is pretty health conscious, so that's the biggest factor right there. You know, sleep hygiene, blue light filtering at night, um, you know, healthy diet, of course. What's a blue you know, light filter? I, yeah, I'm sorry. What is that? Well, you know, at night, the blue light from your phone or from your screen yeah. uh, dampens down melatonin. Melatonin actually, get this, let me pull this up. Melatonin inhibits the NLRP3 uh, inflammasome that has been shown in studies to be very virulent with uh, cold coronavirus infections. Uh, oh, really? I think it's starting to see here. Yeah, hang on, pull so it do up. do you think people should supplement with melatonin? Yes, I do, actually. I think that, uh, especially as you get older, as you know, endogenous melatonin goes down. Blue light inhibits endogenous melatonin because it's synthesized uh, through your eyes, mm -hmm. you know? Right. So definitely, um, I think oral isn't as good, but it's better than nothing at all. But definitely blue light filtering, wearing some glasses at night mm -hmm. to stop that blue light from, uh, you know, sh shunting melatonin synthesis right. would be a really great thing to start doing, actually. But no, back to being healthy in general, you know, bodybuilding, I mean, most bodybuilders are health conscious. They probably train really hard, which can be immunosuppressive. Mm -hmm. And as you know, too many anabolics can be immunosuppressive also. Mm -hmm. So you probably want to be a little bit aware of that. But in general, they're pretty healthy, I think, for the most yeah. part. A lot of data is coming out on gut dysbiosis. The gut is very high in ACE2 uh, uh, enzyme production. So there, and also, a recent study on like 175 patients found that they had a certain species, Firmicutes, was one bacteria found in the gut that in high amounts seemed to allow COVID entry into the body, actually. So definitely dysbiosis is something that everybody should be aware of. And um, I think short term, like really high quality uh, probiotics are really good. I wouldn't trust any cheap probiotics because a study came out recently. I got to give a acknowledgement to uh, Subversity Adele, who's a great researcher. He showed that there's um, antibiotic resistant bacteria strains in a lot of probiotics. Mm -hmm. So that's of concern because, you know, this whole jumping gene theory where if you have a certain species of probiotic in your gut and it has antibiotic resistance, it could transfer that to other species and start making your gut into like a factory of antibiotic resistant bacteria. So I only go with high quality, like the Gut Institute has a Bifidal Maximus that's really good quality as an example, mm -hmm. or maybe professional line uh, probiotics are really good typically because they hold them to a higher standard, you know? I take uh, like a Bubby sauerkraut. I, I like fermented sauerkraut. That's good. Oh, without that, kimchi, sauerkraut. Yeah. yeah, you're right. That's great. I, I love that. I, I believe that the food sources of probiotics provide so much more quantity-wise. I think it's the quantity we really need in our gut. Yeah, that's a great point. You're right. I mean, you're talking like orders of a trillion, and most probiotics yeah. have like what, a billion if they're lucky. Yeah. So definitely the quantity and the diversity of species is really important right, also, actually. Right. And also, you know, then you got to feed these bacteria to keep them alive. So it's taking a good fiber supplement, you know, a, yeah. a, a soluble-based fiber supplement. I always recommend, obviously, my species nutrition um, fiberized, but that feeds the gut bacteria and keeps them it healthy. Does. If yeah. you don't give your gut bacteria food to eat, you know, prebiotics, then they, they, they don't, they die off a lot of times. Yeah. I mean, some of those fibers, like what? I think it's like uh, glucomannan or arabinogalactin. Um, you know, they're soluble and inside pectin, as an example. Yeah, even, those even things really Even psyllium is a great source of uh, food for these. Yeah, uh, even psyllium to some extent as yeah. well, right, without a doubt. Yeah, so gut modulation is really important. Uh, there's been a study showing that a combination of, uh, believe it or not, aspirin, glycine, and lysine, this is published in 2016 against coronavirus, uh, the Journal of Antivirals and Antiretrovirals, was really effective at inhibiting um, uh, coronavirus, as an example. Well, methylene blue. Methylene blue really? also. The one. Yeah, it's well, a, it's lysine, a very lysine is something that a lot of people take for cold sores, which is the herpes virus. So that would yeah, make sense, exactly. obviously. Yeah. Uh, I heard that in the 1918 pandemic, Spanish flu pandemic, aspirin was used very successfully in certain communities, actually. So there is some anecdotal evidence supporting that as well. Mm. Um, resveratrol has been shown to be active against coronavirus. Um, there only really? maybe two studies, so it's not a lot of evidence, but it definitely is something that well, can't I'm drinking drink. a glass of red wine every night, so hopefully I'm protecting myself. Probably not enough resveratrol in wine. <laughs> I take resveratrol too, though. I'm Alcohol but, probably counteracts the beneficial effects. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Kind of sucks. <laughs> but you feel good, you lower stress maybe, I guess, yeah. yeah.
but yeah, no, um, you know, quercetin as an example was shown specifically protective against Ebola and Zika and the two viruses right there. So the combination again, curcumin, quercetin and ECGC, mm. again, they aid with zinc transfer as well. Now your body has zinc, you get it in your diet naturally, yeah. but I guess there's an ability to increase cellular uptake and quercetin and ECGC from green tea have been shown to enhance that transport. As well as uh, quinine, which a lot of people, I, I've been recommending uh, people drink t d diet tonic water. You can get the quinine in there, which also is an ion of four, which opens up the channel for zinc. It, it is, um, you know, I know, I'm not sure. I think the amount of quinine you get in tonic water is not, you have to do like 20 liters a day from what I've read. Oh yeah. So like copious quantities. Also, I got to say the whole hair dryer thing, it, it's just, I don't think there's a lot of evidence supporting that either. <laughs> no, I, I, don't you be know, pulling a hair dryer, you know. You bad. know who sent me the hair dryer video? Dr. Bob Goldman, believe it or not, uh, the, who oh, started no the life extension. <laughs> yeah. He, oh, you're kidding. Oh, yeah, he told me, he sent me the, high, the the hair dryer breathing thing. You're breathing the hot air. and Maybe maybe it was a joke and you misinterpreted no, this. No, no, I don't think. But you know what? It, it, it is, there's a book written on this thing. Have you seen it? The, the, it's called The Cold Hot Cycle or something like that. It's, it's there's, there's definitely a, you know, there's a definite science behind it. I don't know if it works or not, but. It well, temperature, no. Sense. I mean, Wim Hof is based on ice bathing. So without a doubt, yeah. you know, temperature regulation is a great way for the body to upregulate. Well, this so virus it's... dies in, in in exposure to the 133 degrees or higher. And um, think about it. Yeah. it the, the virus seats itself in the throat. It, <laughs> well, the virus seats itself in your throat, okay, in the nasal passages for the first four days before it starts going deeper into your into your lungs. So... If you can kill it off, you know, before it actually starts traveling, I, I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, logically. It makes sense. But again, for me, it's like there's got to be at least some studies. I mean, like one or two studies showing that uh, from in order for me to recommend it, actually. You know, it sounds yeah. plausible, but, you know, I you mean. You got to watch. I got, you got to read the book, I guess. I'll send you the link to the book. You'll see. Okay. That's uh, cool. I don't know. I haven't done it or anything like that, but I'm just saying. I There's also people say gargle with salt, salt water a couple times a day. To, actually, zinc lozenges. Zinc, yeah. yeah, zinc vitamin C lozenges might help because if you saturate those tissues, you're yeah. right, with an effective form of zinc, like zinc gluconate as an example, yeah. that might inhibit replication and give your body a, a head start to kind of like, you know, start programming itself against the virus, actually, right, you right, know. Right. Uh, elderberry is really good. There's a lot of evidence for elderberry. Yeah, I noticed that Amazon's all sold out of elderberry, you know. My kids yeah. have the little elderberry uh, gummies that are like basically sugar, you know, they're basically sugar gummies with a little bit of elderberry in it, you know. But they're See, all the, sold the, out. <laughs> and the, this is the problem with dietary supplements too, is that people hear elderberry and they think elderberry gummies are good, yeah. but you need like 750 milligrams of active <laughs> elderberry to have a pharmacological effect. So, sure. you know, it's unfair to say that you can just take any form and you're gonna be okay, you're not. Well, you know it's mean? like these multivitamins, they sell these one a day stuff or these gummy one a days, you know, that people think they're getting all the oil because it has 100% of the RDA, which we know is grossly inadequate for most people. So. It, well, it's I mean, even worse because then it has like uh, toxic forms, like maybe yeah. uh, selenomethionine. So right. selenomethionine is a high, is a more toxic form of selenium. Um, you know, like DL alpha tocopherol. Your body can't even use DL alpha tocopherol right. as an example. You know, right. so right. like the insanity out there. No wonder half the people don't believe in vitamins because they're getting really poor yeah. quality. Vitamins, I tell actually. you, they're better off not even using a vitamin than taking a, a one a day. Yeah. I mean, come on. I said, yeah. you can't put enough yeah. in the one pill. Uh, to give your body what it would require of all these nutrients and vitamins and minerals. I mean, so, yeah. but people are lazy. You know that, Brian. Yeah, no, without a doubt. Listen, as far as elderberry, though, one thing I would caution is that when people do get coronavirus, this phenomenon called a cytokine storm can happen. Yeah. And it's when the immune system, and this is why you want to be careful about too, amping up the immune system too much, because if you amp it up too much and you hyperstimulate it, you're allowing the coronavirus to hijack that immune stimulation in a sense. And sure. so cytokine storm is where the body overreacts and floods the lungs with liquid and people are dying from the, uh, you know, from the complications of that. Yeah. So elderberry should probably be stopped if you get sick because you, that may contribute to what's called the cytokine storm. Mm -hmm. so take yeah. it beforehand, but stop it if you get sick. Well, what happens is the, when, when you get the coronavirus, it recruits these, um, the leukocytes, right? And or yeah. neutrophils, excuse me, neutrophils. And, you know, they come and they release all their chemicals to, to attack these things. But what happens is they get confused and they start releasing too much. And that's called the cytokine storm. Yeah. These cytokines. Yeah. And these, these cytokines are basically what kill off the virus. But if you release too much of it, it starts killing off the good tissues too. Yeah. 
and yeah, exactly. you don't want to damage your lung tissues worse than what the what the virus is doing. And, but this yeah. virus is smart; it knows that's what's going to happen, so it, it does over incite the immune system, like you said. I can't stand when people say viruses are smart as if they think, you know what I mean? It's like they're not, well, they're not intelligent, you know? <laughs> well, who knows? We don't know what it is. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's got RNA. It's got some kind of you know, genetic material that, that enables it to want to replicate itself, right? It knows what it has to do. Science Mag had an article published last week that they were able to uh, implant nano chips in viruses or in uh, vaccines, actually, you know? Really? So... And you know what's funny? This is crazy, man. The guy from Harvard, the chair of the chemistry department, was arrested for collaborating with the Chinese in Wuhan at a university. There. He was working on nanotechnology to be implemented in biological tissue. Really? So it's kind of funny that, you know, like they're able to develop these nano chips that can be implanted and given through vaccines. This guy was arrested for working on something that, and also they said he was working on batteries, but if you look at uh, a patent search for his name, you find nothing to do with batteries and lithium batteries. It's all to do with nanoparticles and biological tissue is what he was really working on. So it's, you know, listen, it's coincidental, but Dave, it's eerily coincidental. This guy gets arrested at the same time as all this stuff breaks out right. and he happens to be working on stuff with like uh, nanoparticles and, you know, nano tissue and stuff, you know. It's do too you... Here's the final question. We'll, we'll leave people on this answer to this question. Do you believe that the virus was released so that people demand a vaccine? And in doing so, we will be given something in this vaccine maybe that we don't want in our bodies. Some nano, you know, particulate stuff that's going on there that might act as a way to track us or control us or, that, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I can't say yes to that. I want to, but in good with good faith, there's no evidence for that. I mean, people are saying that George Soros and Bill Gates had financed a lab in Wuhan, and you know, Bill Gates had been on uh, YouTube talking about he wants to control or help the population by lowering the population or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I really can't speak to that. Actually, listen, people are addicted to their cell phones. They become extensions of self, so they already have a tracking device built into your body yeah. already. Actually. Yeah. Um, so I, I, it's just, it sounds like a good one that's worth more investigation, but you got to talk to like the X-Files crew and see if they can investigate that. <laughs> well, you no. know, in China, they, in China, they, they track every, they have like millions and millions of cameras everywhere. They track every yeah, right. movement that these people make there and the people are fine with it. It's in technology. Yeah, exactly. They yeah. actually have, they get demerits if they do things like breaking the law, like jaywalking. And if they do that's follow right. the law perfectly, they get credits and they actually get well paid yeah. paid bonuses for that there's a black mirror episode like that it's pretty amazing actually it's but it's scary i mean remember i i don't know if you did it but when i was in uh, going into 10th grade over the summer between 9th and 10th grade they made us read the book 1984 yeah. and yeah. Uh, a brave new world and yeah. 1984 was all about big brothers watching us and every yeah. movement you that make they're, they're watching and 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 everyone thought it was a joke back then, but really, aren't we really there at this point now? No, we are. And here's the thing again, and this is why 2020 is a great time to start looking at what we're doing as a group because, you know, science-based capitalism, it really breeds uh, the third worldization, right? You have this, look at the extremes. You have Jeff Bezos owns more than like, you know, 18 countries combined, including the <laughs> U.S. So no, there really is an extreme here, I think, in a sense where, you know, on, on Naomi Klein calls it shock and awe capitalism. You use a crisis and the powerful can grab more stuff. It happened in um, Hurricane Katrina yeah. in Louisiana. It Maybe it's happened. Actually, The Atlantic just published an article two days ago on how this shock doctrine capitalism is being used by the powerful to grab more power. So right. without a doubt. There's a lot of really, really credential people saying this. And I think, again, I think you're right, that science-based capitalism where it's only money, it ends up hurting most of us at the expense of making a few people, robber barons, you know, super wealthy. It, it's it's um, discerning, but if you allow it to eat away at you and you think about it too much and worry about it, <laughs> you're wasting your time. And you're and you wasting get resources yeah. and you're stressing yourself unnecessarily because we really have no control over what's going on. But it's, it's interesting to hypothesize and, and, and go through these different scenarios because we assume we know everything that's going on, but we probably know less than 50% of what's really going on, wouldn't you say? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I remember like there's a church commission report in the 70s when the uh, Congress investigated the CIA for the black operations. Yeah. I'll never forget. 
Michael Levine, again, core qualified expert witness on conspiracy theory, was reading this and he says that public incredulity took care of why they could do this stuff. The CIA knew the public would refuse to believe, they refused to believe that our government could do things against us and it allowed them to continue the COVID operations actually, you know, right, so. Right. They, and this is, again, a congressional report. It's available from a Freedom of Information Act request. You can look at it yourself, you know. Crazy. You know, but like I said, <laughs> for most of us, it really doesn't affect our everyday lives, but, but it, it happens. But it's and, and, and you know what? We're, we probably, yeah. for 90% of our population, we probably really don't want to know what Donald Trump knows. Because if we did, we probably couldn't handle it. So the yeah. fact that these, these world leaders know what's going on behind the scenes and still can function on a daily basis is, is really a miracle. They are really superior people in that sense. You know, you can look at their foibles and all the mistakes they make, but most of us couldn't handle the stress of being in that position. Yeah, well, just remember, Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, he, yeah. Yeah, he, was, sure he, he was, yeah, supposedly committed suicide. Yeah. But, but uh, that, that's another show. Brian, it was great talking to you. I love to discuss supplements. I love to discuss, you know, current events with you. I love to discuss science with you. It's you always have a very fresh perspective on it, and uh, we're, you know, we're we're gonna mull around the idea of bringing back your old show that you had called Quantum Physiques. Although I'd like to do it, I, did we we did it in video? or Was that a radio show when we did it? It was just a, a, a audio show only. Yeah, yeah we I'd did, like to uh, do it in video yeah. this time. Um, yeah. And if people would like to see Brian back uh, interviewing, you know, people who are maybe not mainstream people, people have alternative, you know, theories on things and supplement and science and, and all the stuff we kind of talked about today, put it in the comments below. Let us know. Like this video. And um, we could very well bring back Brian's show. Sounds good. All Give right. That's going to take us to the end of another episode of RX Muscles Supplement and Science. I am Dave Palumbo for Brian Cunningham. We'll see you next time. Cool. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, Brian.